Team GB's record-breaking athletes have spent their first night back on British soil after returning from Rio with their best medal haul in over a century. Liam Heath won gold in the 200-meter kayak single and silver in the 200-meter double, becoming Britain's most successful Olympic kayaker of all time. And he was among the champions who returned on the specially chartered flight yesterday, which we're calling the party plane. And Liam joins us now. Have you got a touch of a hangover or are you OK? Uh, no, I'm absolutely fine. I had a great night's sleep last night. Um, and it wasn't so much of a party plane as it's being made out. Um, really? Don't ruin that. <laughs> we Come like on, the idea of you all having fun. We've got to go, got to go to town fun. on this. We were looking at those hockey girls it looks like if you were down the back of the plane with the hockey girls that's where the action was and that, they were at the front of the plane they were uh, the front, were they? yeah no that, that was great having the national anthem sing and then they were jumping up and down as well just afterwards and i was at the front and the boat you could feel the plane slightly bounce <laughs> on the runway um that was pretty impressive i thought and, and slightly worrying i should uh, imagine yeah, slightly worrying but um, the whole vibe simmered down quite quickly after that so you had the whole plane how did they decide who sat where? Because mm. you're up front. I mean, was it was it all to do with medal hall? If you got enough medals, you could sit in first class or business? Um, yeah, it was kind of to do with the medal bits, but uh, also they wanted to keep people together uh, who competed as a team. So right. you had all the rowing eights together, you had the t uh, hockey girls all together, and uh, I was lucky enough to sneak up to the first class, which was absolutely incredible. So you flew uh, back first class? Uh, I did, yeah, for the first time in my life. What was it? Oh, that must have been brilliant. It was absolutely amazing, and we were so looked after by the BA staff as well. They were wonderful um, and it was a pretty awesome flight back and you of course and we will get on to your reporting achievement <laughs> moment don't worry but you're a mixologist aren't you you went to living for a while making cocktails i understand you can make 150 yeah. of them uh, probably not now that was a kind of former life and uh, my memory is not not that great so <laughs> i could probably make about five to ten now uh, but i used to do all the bottle throwing and all that so were you stuff. thinking we, we were hoping you'd invented one on the plane yeah was there the a, a rio gold something uh, like no i haven't really thought about it too much to be honest uh, unfortunately be serious about it's sport ben that's the problem with these athletes <laughs> I know, that's not serious why they about win party. The gold. Uh, let's talk about rio then uh, what an extraordinary success for you we can see your gold and we can yeah. see your silver i mean it's the sort of thing that you, you plan for and you prepare for mm. and you work really really hard for but then you've got to get out there and do it uh what was it like uh it was absolutely incredible the whole vibe out there was awesome uh the, the people out there are so friendly and the games was run really well from where i was kind of sat but uh, as an athlete you have to put yourself in a bubble and just focus on what you want to do and the work you've been doing up to that point only gives you um, the encouragement to get out there and, mm. and, and achieve what you want to do. And you um, have had time away from the sport, hadn't you? Because your degree yeah. wasn't like very often it can be a sporting degree. It was in engineering, wasn't it? Um, it was in industrial design and technology, mm. yeah, so product design. Um, and towards the end of that degree, I decided to focus on my degree and get that done and dusted. And then uh, when I popped out the other side, I didn't really know where I wanted to go. Um, and 200 metres was then announced as an Olympic discipline. Uh, so I decided to give it a go. I've always been quite a, a fast person in a boat. Um, so it seemed like an open door and I just took the opportunity and walked through it. That's fascinating to me because I find watching the Olympics is so inspirational. You're all extraordinary individuals, you're superheroes as far as I'm concerned. But it's interesting that the idea of being in the Olympics was a specific inspiration to you. So not the Worlds, not some of the other games, but just that goal of being there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a dream for anyone, you know, mm. to obviously go and compete at the games and especially uh, younger people and younger generations. Uh, to have that ambition and drive to get to where they want to go and, and, and achieve something like an Olympics mm. is absolutely incredible. And now you've tasted the success and become the, the, <laughs> the, the greatest kayaker that we have ever of all time. Uh, is 2020 on the horizon already? You've already going, right, I've had this, I've had a little taste. I want, well, obviously you've got a medal in, in, in London as well, but I want more now. I've got to be there in 2020. Um, four years is a long time. Well, I've got a bit of time off now, so I have to go away and think about where I want to go and what I want to do. Um, so that's still on the cards, but I haven't really made up my mind. And uh, I know the kids have got them already back at school, but they've had their summer holidays and, and other kids as well are still on their holidays. And wasn't it a kind of activity day, just a normal thing that you do to spend some time when you were 10? that got you into it? Yeah, it was a, a holiday fund scheme run mm. by uh, the council in Guildford uh, just to get kids involved in sport um, and Wade Kite Club opened their doors and I went along and enjoyed it. It was basically a social group for me down there. It was such a great feeling to be part of a, a club as well. Um, 
and that just kept me going back and slowly progressed, slowly getting better and better at it. And is that the key for young people, getting more young people into sports like yours? And some of the sports that perhaps don't get the media attention between the Olympics is having the opportunities for youngsters to try it. Yeah, basically. Um, just to get down and try any kind of sports, there's m many out there, um, and it basically comes down to just enjoying it, really, I think. As long as you enjoy something, you, you will go back and continue mm. to do that and strive to be better. I was watching on the sidelines and I was thinking, oh, I'd love to be at the Olympics. And I think that's what inspired me to get back in the pool was thinking I want to be at another Olympics. So obviously four years for to Tokyo still feels a long way. But you know what? I, I love the Olympics. I love racing the best in the world mm. and I can't wait to be competing again um, and obviously pushing my body as hard as 